Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destinations better. For today's video, we have surveyed over 100 people to figure out the top 10 foods of the great country, Poland. Before we start today, I just want to give everybody a heads up that my pronunciation of these words, these foods, probably isn't going to be the best, so, uh, so bear with me. The number 10 spot goes to a drink called Starka. Starka. This whiskey-like vodka drink is made by distilling fermented rye two times. While the Starka is aging in the barrels, the distiller will then add some apple leaves or pear leaves in there for extra flavor and aroma. And similar to whiskeys, when you order this or buy a bottle of it, you'll find it aged. So for example, you might find 12-year Starka, six-year Starka, similar to whiskeys and other barrel-aged spirits. So because of the apple and pear leaves, you'll actually get that aroma while sipping it, and they also come through in the taste. Now from what I found, there's generally three ways to drink this. Either neat with no ice, on the rocks with ice, or as a cocktail with some apple juice. And Stark has been around Poland for a while. It's been around since the 15th century. And the tradition goes like this. The father of the household would pour some alcohol into a big barrel, seal it, and bury it. When that child gets married, the barrel's lifted, and that's what they drink at the wedding. These were the early days for Starka. The number nine spot on our list goes to a soup called Zurek. Zurek. In Poland, this soup is traditionally made using fermented rye, but in some regions, you might find it made with fermented oatmeal instead. Using this fermented grain, it gives the soup a fermented flavor, often compared to the taste of a sourdough bread. It can either be heavy and hearty or thin and delicate, and it's sour, salty, and creamy all at the same time. When getting this soup, you might find it in a bread bowl, you might find Find it in a bowl poured over some mashed potatoes, or you might find it just in a plain bowl, you know, eat it with a spoon, no gimmicks, just soup in a bowl. And you might also find it with some Polish sausage in there or hard boiled eggs, just for a little something extra. Remember before when I said I might not be able to pronounce things right? Please, please, please go easy on me with this one. The next spot on our list goes to Plaki Ziemniachane. Yikes. So this dish is a Polish potato pancake. The shallow fried discs of grated potato deliciousness are generally served with a meat sauce, applesauce, sour cream, cottage cheese, or even a fruit-based syrup, similar to, I don't know, a potato pancake. These potato pancakes were extremely popular with monasteries in the 17th century. They were then considered a peasant food in the 19th century and have been growing more and more popular ever since. And the popularity of this dish is largely accredited to the historical presence of Jewish communities in the country. Eat some history, eat some Plotsky, ziem niachane. The next spot on our list goes to Silesian dumplings. Silesian dumplings. Simply put, these are Polish potato dumplings, similar to the Italian gnocchi. The dough for these dumplings is pretty straightforward. We're talking mashed potato, potato flour, a little bit of salt and egg. They can be rolled into little individual balls by hand, or they can be rolled out into a giant log and then cut up into the individual dumplings. Like I said, very similar to the Italian gnocchi, delicious. They can be served plain with bacon, with different kinds of sauces, or even alongside a salad. Next spot on our list goes to the Polish sausage, the kielbasa. Kielbasa. This Polish staple is known worldwide, and I was shocked that it didn't get a higher spot on today's list. Kielbasa refers to any sausage from Poland, whether it's fresh or smoked, and can be stuffed with any kind of meat, but generally, one would be consuming pork when consuming kielbasa. Other meats that can be used or that you can find in kielbasa include beef, lamb, chicken, turkey, or veal. And each region in Poland is gonna have their own personal preferences. Here are some varieties of kibasa that you might find in Poland. Wish me luck on these. Kabanos, which is a thin, air-dried pork sausage with caraway seed. Krakowska, thick porkage from Krakow that's hot smoked with garlic and pepper. Kashanka, blood sausage that's also known as black pudding. Vyshelna, 
a medium girthed pork sausage that's usually saved for special occasions like weddings. Viechka, a rural sausage that's made with veal, pork, marjoram, and garlic. And kielbasa polska, which is the most popular. If you've been around the Polish sausage block a time or two, let us know what your favorite variety of kielbasa is. These sausages can be eaten plain, but you can also find them cut up in a number of dishes for some extra Polish sausage flavor. Number five goes to vodka. Vodka. Originating in Poland, Russia, and Sweden, at its simplest state, this drink is made from a combination of ethanol alcohol and water. Ethanol alcohol comes from the distillation of something. Traditionally, one would distill the juice from a variety of different kinds of cereals, like barley or wheat, but you can really use anything to make vodka. Not anything, but you know, anything. In Poland, this drink is traditionally enjoyed neat, meaning plain with no ice, water, or any kind of mixers. But instead, they'll put the bottle of vodka in the freezer and enjoy it chilled. Vodka has been produced in Poland since the Middle Ages and has been developing a reputation for the spirit ever since. Kind of similar to how Scotland's known for their Scottish whiskey, scotch. This is an old drink. The first records of vodka in Poland are from 1405. When everybody started to discover vodka, it was actually used as a medicine. The intended use for this medicine were to increase fertility and awaken lust. A big vodka in the area that I'm dying to try is called Zubrovka. Zubrovka. This vodka is flavored with bison grass from the northeastern part of the country. This bison grass is an aromatic herb with a sweet scent and a subtle flavor that's said to be fresh, vanilla, lemon, nutty, and chamomile-like. The word vodka can also be traced back to the word water. So be careful if you order a round of waters for the table, you never know what you're gonna get you'll probably get water. But you should also order a round of vodkas for everybody too. Number four goes to sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. This fermented Polish staple is everywhere in the country. Sauerkraut is shredded up cabbage, and sometimes carrot that's been fermented. And the fermentation process changes a lot about the cabbage. First off, texturally, it gets much limper. And due to the lactic acid of the fermentation process, the flavor gets very sour. And generally, the shredded cabbage is just gonna be a lot wetter because the salt added for the fermentation process is gonna suck the water out of the vegetable. Fermented cabbage is an old process that actually made its start in Asia. Eventually, it made its way to Eastern and then Central Europe, making it much easier to preserve the cabbage and sell it for trade. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Production is simple. Shred up the cabbage, sprinkle with some salt, and let it ferment in an airtight container. Some other ingredients besides the cabbage and the carrots that you might find in sauerkraut include caraway seed, apple, cranberry, bell peppers, or even beets. The resulting fermented creation is normally served cold and is typically found as a side dish or as an ingredient in many other dishes. Number three spot goes to a stuffed cabbage called galapki. Galapki. This Central European staple, at its simplest, is stuffed cabbage leaves. A cooked mixture of ground pork or beef, rice or barley, and onion and maybe some other things are wrapped up inside of boiled cabbage leaves almost like a Polish cabbage burrito. This stuffed cabbage leaf creation is then baked in the oven, making everything melt together and cooking the meat that's inside. They're usually served with mashed potato or rye bread, maybe some applesauce, and they're usually served either warm or at room temperature. Golapki can also be found topped with tomato sauce or even some sour cream on there, and they're traditionally served for bigger, more important events like weddings or holidays. But since they are a tradition for such intimate family events, each family is very proud of their glapi recipes, and I'm sure each is unique in its own special way. The number two spot goes to a soup called borscht. Borscht. This European beet soup is very popular amongst the Polish people. This soup is made with beets, bone broth, and a bunch of different vegetables, including cabbage, onion, carrots, tomatoes or potatoes, and sometimes meat. Once the soup is poured into the bowl, it's usually topped with a dollop of sour cream, some potato, or hard-boiled egg. Its viscosity can either be thick or thin, and its clarity can either be opaque or clear. There's a lot of variation here. Although the soup is traditionally served hot, there is a cold variety for those hot summer months as well. 
The chilled soup has a lot of similarities in the sense that it is beet based and a lot of the flavor is still there. However, the ingredients and the preparation is slightly different. Cold borscht will contain beet juice, sour cream or buttermilk, or even yogurt. And it's usually served with a cucumber slice, sliced radish, some hard cooked eggs, maybe even some dill or green onion on there for some garnish, a little extra flavor, and a little extra texture. It sounds really refreshing and I might try to make this in the summertime here in New Jersey. The art of making borscht is a balancing act between sweet and sour flavors. Traditionally, the sour in the borscht is introduced by adding something called beet sour. This is a fermented beet juice. Then sugar, lemon juice, pickle juice, or red wine can be added to balance everything out. Just be careful when ordering things because the word borscht can refer to a wide array of sour soups, not just this one. The number one spot goes to the Polish dumpling that we all know and love, the pierogi. Pierogi. This world famous Polish dumpling can either be savory or sweet. This Polish dumpling can be either savory or sweet, boiled or pan fried, and must be made with an unleavened dough that conceals whatever is inside. Fillings one might encounter include potato, fried onions, sauerkraut, meat, mushroom, spinach, or different seasonal fruits such as plum, blueberries, apples, cherries, or strawberries. Potato or cabbage pierogies are a good example of savory options, whereas the different fruits would be the choices for your sweeter pierogies. Basic pierogi dough is made with flour and water, but sometimes egg, mashed potato, or even fruit can be incorporated in there as well. Once constructed, pierogi are boiled at the very least, but they can also be finished in the frying pan for a little extra browning, a little bit extra crunch. Savory varieties might be topped with butter, sour cream, chopped bacon, onions or mushrooms, whereas sweet varieties might be topped with different jams, applesauce, sweet and sour cream, or different kinds of fruit preserves. Like many classic old world foods, history here is a little blurry. Nobody knows precisely where pierogi came from. However, evidence does show that it was somewhere in Central or Eastern Europe and easily could have originated someplace within the boundaries of modern day Poland. So there you have it guys, the top 10 foods for Poland. If you haven't already, please consider liking this video or subscribing to the channel. We would greatly appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one, but until then, travel well. Kind of similar to how Scotland's known for their Scottish whiskey.